Now, um, Maria, you know, Uganda has been witnessing a lot of action uh, for quite some time. Now, uh, tell us, what, what, what is, in a short, uh, in few words, the state of human rights in Uganda right now? Well, with elections scheduled for February 2016, we remain really concerned about the human rights situation. Clearly, the ability of Uganda's government, particularly the police, to respect human rights will be critical to having a free and fair campaign. So we're certainly looking at how journalists are being treated, how the media can cover campaign issues, how the public themselves can participate in demonstrations and in rallies. So we're very concerned about the ability of everyone to assemble in different places throughout the country. And as always, we remain very concerned about police and military use of force mm -hmm. during demonstrations. And in general, police brutality remains a really yeah. critical issue. Now, uh, Nicholas, you know, this has been going on for a long time. What somebody uh, gets out of it when you observe is that the government doesn't seem to care much. Well, um, the government should care. And I think that's the reason all of us, um, every time, continue to remind the government of its obligation to respect the fundamental rights of Ugandans the right to associate, the right to freely express themselves. It is the duty of the state um, to respect those rights. To yeah, but it, but it looks like it hasn't really bothered to, to respect those. How do you make sure that Uganda, the government of Uganda, can actually respect that? I mean, we are engaged in providing people with the necessary knowledge about their rights uh, in order for them to be able to stand up to the state and demand accountability and de demand respect for human rights. In many instances, we are holding the state accountable by taking the state to court, suing the government of Uganda, and in some cases, making some very good progress. Now, Maria, you know, recently, actually, you personally reported on the case of an opposition activist who was arrested, stripped, uh, naked. Uh, does uh, the targeting of, uh, you know, people, does it discriminate? I mean, what activities they're engaged in, or is it just as long as you seem to be expressing an opposing view to the government's position? Well, we've remained very concerned about the police use of force in the context of opposition demonstrations or rallies. You know, we documented killings by both the police and the military in September 2009 and in April 2011. So police accountability for the use of force in the context of public gatherings remains a really critical issue. And if people cannot participate in demonstrations or in even opposition meetings, that's going to affect the ability of Uganda to hold a free and fair election. Yes. Uh, now, Nicholas, uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, the other people you represent, uh, you know, we have had also other groups of people have been, uh, you know, seriously affected by the violations there. Uh, what headway are you making, at least through the court system? Well, there are several cases that have gone through the court system. The difficulty with the cases we are handling is that the arrests and the prosecutions that are undertaken by the government is not done with the intention of prosecuting. So the cases end up being clogged up in the criminal justice system. They take years and people have to report to court you know, now and again. So what we are doing is first exposing this abuse of the criminal justice system by the government uh, in the pretext of trying people, exposing it and making sure people know what's happening. But in many instances, challenging those prosecutions. And in, in a couple of cases, the courts have dismissed those, 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 those allegations and um, people have gained their freedom. But particularly, I think that what is important to highlight in the context of demonstration is the attack on women. We've seen increasingly gruesome violations of the dignity of women who take part in public assembly. That's concerning for us. Now, Maria, uh, what, what would you want uh, to see happen? I mean, uh, the, uh, the groups that fight for human rights uh, of people have said there is a need for coordinated response. W what is it you would like to see the international community do? Well, we have a couple of key messages, I think. I mean, the first one that we'd like to see both Ugandan groups, international human rights groups, and frankly, Uganda's development partners pushing for, for example, is that the police view of the lawfulness of a gathering shouldn't be the basis upon which they use force. So the police use of force has to be proportionate, and it has to be based on the conduct of those gathered. So if police believe that a gathering is somehow unlawful, that police haven't been duly notified, that isn't a basis upon which to go in and start tear gassing everyone using rubber bullets or using live ammunition. Clearly, that determination is based on the conduct of the gathering, and peaceful people gathered together have a right to be there. That's going to be a key issue. We also are looking to see the new Ugandan Anti-Torture Act, it's not so new anymore, actually start to be used. We still have not seen a prosecution under that act, 
Police brutality remains an important issue, and yet we don't see prosecutors bringing those charges. I think if we saw some police prosecuted for torture in Uganda, it could potentially start to stem the tide of impunity. Very quickly, what is the situation in neighboring Burundi? Yeah, Burundi, it's obviously a terrible situation. Human Rights Watch has documented scores of killings just since August. We remain very concerned about the police involvement in those killings. We have some specific cases in which we've documented that the police have been involved in those killings. And we continue to push the Burundian authorities and the police to investigate those killings, to have an independent and impartial investigation, to hold police accountable for their actions. So the buck stops with the Minister of Public Security, and we hope that we will see accountability for those killings. Definitely a conversation that has to continue. Uh, thanks to both of you for your insights. Thank you.